first step to solving a linear system by substitution is to make sure that you have at least one of your equations solved for a variable. So if you look at the equations that I have here, um, they're both solved for y. So this is why the system is a good fit for substitution. Um, so I don't have to do step one because it's already done. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to substitute the expression um, that's solved into the other equation. And this one, it's almost, it's one of those things that's like, it's a little, almost so simple that it, it makes it more confusing. Um, so what we're going to do is um, this top equation says that y equals 6x plus 18. And then the bottom equation says that y also equals negative 2x minus 14. So what I'm going to do is take the bottom equation and I'm going to plug it in for y on the top equation. So what I'm going to end up writing is negative 2x minus 14 equals, and then um, that's equal to 6x plus 18. So I'm basically just setting the two expressions with x in them equal to each other. And now I have to solve it. So um, I like to get uh, my x is on one side first, and I like to keep them so that they're positive. So what I'm going to do is add 2x to both sides. So that would leave me with negative 14 equals, and then 6x plus 2x is 8x plus 18. And now I have to move the 18 to the other side, so I'll subtract that from both sides. Um, and that leaves me with negative 32 equals 8x. And then finally, I can divide both sides by 8. And that gives me my first answer, which is that x is equal to negative 4. Um, now remember, I'm not done. That's half of my answer. Um, my final answer is going to be the ordered pair, negative 4, comma, something. So we have to figure out what that something is. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to do substitution again. Now I'm going to take this answer, this x equals negative 4, and I can plug it into either one of my original equations. It does not matter. Um, you should get the same answer either way. So I'm going to choose to plug it into this top equation. So I'm going to say y equals 6x, but instead of x, I'm putting in negative 4, and then plus 18. Um, 6 times negative 4 is negative 24, and then negative 24 plus 18 is negative 6. So this is the other half of my answer. So final answer is the ordered pair negative 4, negative 6. The first thing we need to look for is to make sure that we have um, an equation that is solved for a variable. And we already have that. It would be this bottom equation that's already solved for y. So what we're going to do is now take that expression, what, what y equals, so this 4x plus 1, and we're going to take it and plug it in where there's a y in the top equation. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is rewrite this top equation, uh, but instead of y, I'm going to put parentheses there, and then I'm going to put this 4x plus 1 in its place. So I'm going to write 4x minus y, but now instead of y, we're typing or we're writing in 4x plus 1, and then that still is equal to negative 3. So now I have an equation that only has x. So I have to distribute. I'm going to dis, uh, distribute this negative to everything um, in the parentheses. So that would give me 4x minus 4x minus 1 equals negative 3. Um, these x's actually cancel each other out because 4x minus 4x is 0. So I end up getting negative 1 equals negative 3, which is not true. Um, negative 1 is not equal to negative 3. So when you come in, into a situation like this, um, what's going on is we have two parallel lines. So when you solve the equation and you come out with something that is not true, the answer is no solution. So if we put these both into slope-intercept form, and I'm going to do that really quick off to the side. Uh, the bottom one's already in slope-intercept form, but I'm going to do it with the top one just to show you. Um, so I would subtract my x term, and I would have negative y equals negative 4x minus 3, and then I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. So I have y equals, and then these turn positive, so that's 4x. I don't need the 1 and then this is plus 3. So here's my equation. This is like my top equation right here. And if you look, my slope is 4. And then if you look here, my slope is also 4. But then my y-intercepts are different. Uh, the bottom equation is 1, and the top equation is 3. So I have parallel lines, which is, means they're never going to cross, which is why we came out with this uh, weird-looking equation that doesn't make sense. To solve this by substitution, we need to solve one of our equations for a variable. Um, so what we're looking for is the easiest thing we can do to get one of these equations solved. 
Um, so the best case scenario is that you have um, one of your coefficients. So coefficients are the numbers in front of x and y. And what I'm looking for is um, something that's positive 1. Um, so here I have a 7, here's a negative 2, a 7, and this is a negative 1. So I don't have a positive 1. Uh, but this is my best case scenario right here. I want to get this y by itself. Even though it's negative, um, the coefficient is still a 1. So um, that's going to make my life a little bit easier. So I am going to choose my bottom equation, and I'm going to solve it for y. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. All right, so I have to subtract my x term. And that leaves me with negative y equals negative 7x plus 1. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. So that would leave me with y equals, and then uh, the negatives cancel, leaving me with positive 7x. And then 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So now I'm going to take this equation, um, and I'm going to take this expression for x that I know is equal to y, and I'm going to plug it into the top equation. It's really important that you plug in to the other equation. If you plug the equation into itself, um, it's going to give you the wrong answer. So um, let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to take my top equation, which is 7x minus 2y, but instead of y, I'm writing my 7x minus 1, because that's what I know is equal to y. And then uh, that is equal to 9. So now I have an equation that is only x's, so I'll be able to get half of my answer this way. Um, I have to distribute the negative 2. So this is going to be 7x minus 14x, and then plus 2 equals 9. Um, 7x and negative 14x are like terms, so if I combine them, I would have negative 7x. And then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And that leaves me with negative 7x equals 7. And then finally, we'll divide both sides by negative 7 leaving me with x equals negative 1. So that's half of my answer. That's my x value. Now I have to take that and plug it back into one of my original equations, and uh, I'll be able to solve it for um, my uh, y value. Now one thing that you can do, and I just want to caution you um, about doing this, you have to be very confident about your work, um, I'm trying to solve for y, and this equation right here is already solved for y. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just plug my negative 1 back in for x in that equation. Uh, the reason that I want to caution you about it is because if somehow you made a mistake in your equation, um, it's going to give you the wrong answer. So just be really careful. Make sure you're double-checking your work. Um, and so I, while I was talking there, I did some, I plugged in my negative 1, um, and I came out with negative 8. So that would be my y value, and then my final answer is this ordered pair, negative 1, negative 8. All right, so we're looking for um, a variable that has a coefficient of positive 1, and we actually have it in this problem. It happens to be our top equation, and I'm going to be solving it for y, because that's the coefficient of positive 1. So I'm going to rewrite that down here, 3x plus y equals negative 1, and I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides so I can get y by itself. So I would have y equals negative 3x minus 1. So now what I'm going to do is take this uh, expression, negative 3x minus 1, and it's going to get replaced where there's a y in the second equation. Um, so I'm going to write this down, 9x plus 3y, but now instead of y, I'm writing negative 3x minus 1. And then that is equal to negative 3. All right, so I have to uh, distribute the 3. So that would be to here and to here. So I would have 9x uh, minus 9x minus 3 equals negative 3. Uh, these 9x's actually cancel each other out. And all I have left is negative 3 equals negative 3. Um, now this is true. We did an equation before where we came out with uh, two numbers that were not equal. But negative 3 is equal to negative 3 all the time, every time. So um, what this means is that there aren't any x's that you could plug in that wouldn't make this equation work. Um, and what this means is that we actually have infinitely many solutions. And if you remember from uh, the previous lesson, infinitely many solutions means that the lines are actually the same line. So they cross in every possible place. Um, so one thing I want to point out, um, first of all, is if you solve it and you come out with 
two equal numbers, you have infinitely many solutions. That would be your final answer. But second, um, if you take a look at the original problems, if I take the top equation and I multiply everything by 3, I would get 9x plus 3y and then equals negative 3. And now these two equations are the exact same thing. So if you happen to notice that you have two equations and one is a multiple of the other one, meaning you could multiply it by a number and get the same exact equation, that's kind of a, a tip for you that you're going to get infinitely many solutions. This example here is like one of the, the best case scenarios because not only do we have an equation that's already solved for a variable, but it doesn't even have the other variable in it. It's just a number. Um, so I actually know half of my answer. It's just telling me that my x value is 4. Now all I have to do is take that and plug it into the x in my uh, top equation. So where this x is right here, I'm going to put a 4 and that will give me my y value and then I'll be done. Um, and then it also asks us to find the value of y squared. So we'll get there um, once we figure out our y value. So I'm going to write out the top equation. So it's going to be 4 times x, but remember that x is 4, plus 3y equals 1. Um, 4 times 4 is 16. Now I want to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides, which gives me 3y equals negative 15 and then divide both sides by 3, and I can tell you now that y is equal to negative 5. So I'm going to write negative 5 over here. So this is my solution. Um, that's part of my answer. And then it also said to find the value of y squared. Um, so y squared means I'm going to take my y value, which is negative 5, and I'm going to square it. Um, so I really want to know what is negative 5 times negative 5, and the answer is positive 25. Um, one thing I just want to make a note of, so this is something to be careful of, it would be really easy to forget the parentheses and just put this into your calculator without. If you do that, you're going to get negative 25 as your answer, and that is incorrect. So just be really careful anytime you are squaring a number to make sure that you use parentheses, otherwise it's possible that you're going to get um, an incorrect answer.